Hello, operators. Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Today's topic is solar charge controllers, both portable solar charge controllers and solar charge controllers, which can be used from a fixed station. Very often I'm asked for my recommendations on radio friendly solar charge controllers. So far, there's really only been one brand I've continuously come back to throughout the blog and channel's journey. I'll explain why. There's three criteria by which I choose a solar charge controller specifically for radio communications work. Uh, naturally, how portable it is, how RF quiet it is, that's actually the most important aspect, and does it do true MPPT, maximum power point tracking. Now, regarding lightweight and portable, this term typically applies to military or tactical gear that can be carried, deployed, and operated by a single operator without the need for additional support or heavy machinery. Man portable equipment includes items such as weapons, communications devices, surveillance equipment, anything at all, actually, that are specifically designed to be lightweight, compact, and easy to handle by a single operator in the field. Now let's talk about maximum power point tracking. Maximum power point tracking is a technique used in renewable energy gears such as solar voltaic systems to maximize the power output from the solar panels. The primary function of MPPT is to continuously adjust the operating voltage and current of our solar systems to match the optimum power point where the panels generate their maximum power. Since solar panels have a nonlinear relationship between their voltage and current outputs, meaning maximum power point varies depending on factors such as temperature and irradiance, by utilizing MPPT, the solar system can dynamically track and adjust to the maximum power point, extracting maximum available power from our solar panels. MPPT algorithms typically employ a control mechanism that continuously measures the voltage and current of our solar system and adjusts the operating point accordingly. This enables the system to efficiently convert the harvested solar energy into usable electricity, resulting in improved overall system performance and higher energy yields. Now, all of that is absolutely fine, but if the charge controller isn't quiet, well, it puts a damper on our radio communications. RF quiet refers to a state or condition in which a device or system operates without interfering with radio frequency signals. In practical terms, it means that the device or system produces minimum or no electromagnetic interference that can disrupt or degrade our radio communications. When a device is RF quiet, it does not emit unwanted RF signals that can interfere with the operations of our nearby ham radio gear. This is particularly important in environments where we are doing weak signal work, where very weak signals can be washed out by the noise generated from our very own charge controllers. In order to achieve RF quietness, devices are designed and engineers to minimize electromagnetic emissions and adhere to specific RF regulations. These regulations ensure the devices meet certain standards and do not cause harmful interference with other RF systems. By being RF quiet, our charge controllers can coexist and operate without causing disruptions or performance issues for our radio communications gear. Now, it's important to point out that no charge controller is completely quiet. In practice, of course, it means we can have some kind of noise coming from our charge controllers, as long as that noise is beneath the signal-to-noise ratio of the signals we're trying to interact with. For example, if we're operating JS8 call and the station we're engaged with is coming in at minus 15 dB, it doesn't matter if the charge controller is producing noise that's, for example, at minus 20 or minus 25 dB. Of course, the goal is always to have as little noise from our charge controllers as possible. Watching this video, you've probably already assumed we're talking about Genison charge controllers. Genison charge controllers are actually my recommendation. 
I've tried other charge controllers like the Victron, which generally speaking works extremely well for generic applications. Sadly, I found the Victron created too much RF noise on 30 meters through 160 meters HF for the radio communications work I do. Guinnesson charge controllers have continuously ticked all the boxes I needed for an off-grid ham radio power supply over the past six years I've been using them. There are a couple of annoying restrictions with them, but we can get back to those later. Choosing the correct Guinnesson charge controller is perhaps the most confusing part of this topic. As long as we keep our off-grid ham radio gear DC and 12 volts, or actually 11 to 15 volts, without inverters, choosing an MPPT charge controller from Guinnesson is very simple. Let's create a few constants, which any new station operating off-grid should follow anyway. Firstly, the battery is lithium iron phosphate or LIFEPO4 at 12.8 volts nominal voltage. This usually means operating voltage range between 11 to 14.2 or 14.6 volts, depending on your battery. Second, we are using DC power to power our ham radio gear. Third, our solar panels output DC between 15 to, let's say, 32 volts. And lastly, there are no inverters in our system. For example, micro inverters on the solar panels themselves or in the ham shack to power a power supply or directly powering our ham radio gear. Now here's a few things we need to know about our system before choosing the correct charge controller. Firstly, the battery chemistry, lead acid or lithium or lithium iron phosphate. The battery chemistry tells us which type of charge controller will be needed for our chosen battery. Next is the operating voltage of the battery. If we're talking about building a system for 12 volt ham radio gear, it's going to be 12.8 volts nominal. That usually equates to 14.2 to 14.6 volts when fully charged. Operating voltage tells us the voltage our charge controller should support. Next, the maximum voltage of our solar panels. The maximum voltage of our solar panels tells us the max input voltage of our charge controller. Now, the maximum current of our solar panels. This will tell us the maximum input current our charge controllers can handle from our solar panels. Finally, maximum charge rate of our battery. This number is usually a C rating, tells us the maximum charge current for our battery. For the off-grid hamshack project, I'm using a Power Queen 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It has a 12.8 volt nominal voltage, 14.4 volts when fully charged. It's 100 amp hours in capacity. 100 amps maximum load and 100 amp maximum charge current. I've coupled that Power Queen battery with the Guinnesson GV10L charge controller. It's an MPPT charge controller set up in its default configuration. That default configuration is 14.2 volts, 12.8 volt nominal. It supports 4S or 4 in series lithium iron phosphate cells. It has a maximum input voltage of 32 volts, maximum current input of 10.5 amps. If we compare the specs of the Power Queen battery to the specs of the charge controller, we can see how they start to line up. It's important to point out that the capacity of our chosen battery has absolutely nothing to do with which charge controller we use. If the correct voltage is selected for a charge controller, if input current is not exceeded, and if the correct charging profile is used by our charge controller, that charge controller should be able to charge our chosen battery. The only difference between a charge controller supporting 5 amps or charge controller supporting 10 amps or more is how fast they actually charge our chosen battery. All right, guys, I think we'll leave it there. We've already gone down the rabbit hole and we can go a lot deeper, but uh, I would rather do that in another video rather than uh, getting you guys bored with a long video. 
There's a blog post up on oh8stn.org that goes along with this video. It's actually the episode notes, and it goes into much more detail into things that uh, I wanted to put in this video, but the video was simply getting too long. Okay, upcoming topics on the Guinness on Charge controllers are putting them in parallel. That's actually incredibly simple. So I may just do a blog post on it. Uh, tell me if you want a video or not. I've already put one up, actually. Uh, maybe that covers it. Anyway, let me know what you think. The other thing is custom charge controllers from Guinness on. Custom voltage charge controllers. I've got three of them here. Uh, at 14.4 volts, but uh, I think I'll link to an article on the Guinness on website uh, that explains a bit more about those charge controllers. Finally, before I forget, both Guinness on and Power Queen offer discounts to my viewers. With Guinness on, you can use the discount code 5 for OH8STN. That's 5-F-O-R-O-H-8-S-T-N on Guinnesson.eu and the North American website. For Power Queen, actually for Power Queen and Guinnesson, I'll leave the links in the description for both North America and Europe. And I think for Power Queen, I also have links for the UK. So use those links. It helps the channel with Power Queen. If you buy your batteries from Power Queen, it helps the channel. Helps me keep making videos. With Guinness on, it's all about you. You guys just get a better deal. All right, guys, let me know what you think. The only thing I ask is that you be polite. I think you saw my thumb there covering the camera. I'm using my phone. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment and or a thumbs up or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, share this video with someone or somewhere where other operators might find it useful. Rock and roll, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Ciao.